We're here in the heart of the, the hub, the hub of the lakes in Muskoka and Port Carling, looking out onto the uh, Indian River up towards Lake Rosso. Um, I thought I'd like to tell you today about our decibel coalition. Um, the, uh, the problem of uh, excessive boat noise on our lakes has been growing since around the mid 1980s. And uh, it started in the U.S. where the problem was very big. Uh, the, what used to be ocean-going boats have, have now come onto smaller and smaller water, waterways. And of course, the interest in, in speed boats is growing. Uh, they've become more affordable and there's far more options of what kind of boats you can buy. But some of them uh, don't have mufflers. And this, this is uh, very annoying for the peace and quiet and use of the lakes by everybody else. I don't think we have objection to people driving boats quickly as long as they're safe. But noise has no barriers, it's like light. And uh, so people can be driving their boat three kilometers away and, and causing grief to people in a huge radius. Um, we've done surveys, the Safe Quiet Lakes have done surveys, and we found that 67% of the people uh, find that noise is a problem and 61, or they, actually they want, specifically they want police to enforce the current law and, and they, 61% uh, want decibel limits put into place. So the meat of the problem today is that the, the today it's Ill illegal to drive a boat without a muffler. There's a few exceptions but for all intent and purposes you need a muffler. Uh, but the law is written such that the police basically find it impossible to enforce, so they have no tools. When people call the police and complain, all the police can do is talk to the person who's offending. And sometimes they do something about it, but not always. Um, we have a couple of notorious boats on Lake Rosso. Uh, when they go by, they register between 88 and 90 decibels. At 75 decibels, you have to stop talking because it's too loud. So you can imagine what it is at 90 decibels. We just want respectful use of the lakes and we think that getting uh, decibel legislation across Canada will help that tremendously. And happily enough, uh, Transport Canada has opened up this topic for input from, from organizations and stakeholders and individuals. So at their first meeting on this subject, along with many others, was in uh, November and they had another one just in April and we, were, we participated in that one. And we will be working hard to get as many groups individuals and stakeholders as possible to feed their input into Transport Canada so that the Transport Canada has an, enough data to believe that they've got a serious problem and, and formulate a reasonable solution to this problem.